Hey, Les Lethal People, how's everybody today? Had a real rainy day here. I'm getting ready actually to go out in a little bit. I'm telling you, whenever I use these round projectiles, they roll all over the place. So I'm trying to keep count of them. So I'm doing this video in response to a, 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 a thing I saw on Facebook, I think it was on one of the burner, um, burner forums or burner groups about a poor guy that needed to use his burner and his pepper balls failed on him because they were left in there a while from what the thing said and he needed it to protect his pet and they I guess were cracked inside the thing so they cracked inside the mock or whatever they didn't work and he was really upset and I would be really upset too because you rely on him. But one of the things that I want to um, emphasize with all your markers, it doesn't matter whether it's an Umarex HDP50 shooting pepper balls or whether it's your HDR68 shooting pepper balls. When you are going to use these to shoot pepper balls and chemical rounds out of, if you now, these are not real firearms, and I'm not really comparing them to a real firearm or a real gun, but I want to pr compare projectiles for a second. When you use a real bullet in a real gun, and you have something like a semi-automatic where you have to rack the slide and the bullet goes into the chamber. Now, you come home, you drop the magazine, you rack the slide, the bullet comes out, and you stick it back in the magazine. A lot of people are guilty of doing that and don't know if they haven't been taught. What happens is after doing this for like a week every day or two weeks every day and so on and so forth, one bullet becomes shorter than the other. And that's the bullet you're constantly putting back in the top of the magazine. You're not cycling your ammunition. And every time you rack that slide and the bullet gets pushed into the barrel, it makes the bullet a little shorter and shorter and shorter. And you keep doing this over time, you have a defective bullet and there's a good chance that bullet will not go bang when you pull the trigger. So same with these less lethal launches. They're a little, well, a lot more finicky than a real firearm, but you have to be on top and maintain it. I had a guy once come to cut trees down years ago for me and he had a 40 caliber pistol in his back pocket. That was his carry, he carried it for protection. Just in his pocket, no holster. It was the most bizarre thing I ever saw, unsafe. But what was even crazier about the whole thing was his pockets and this thing were full of sawdust from cutting trees and the things. Go and I said to him, I said, how could you rely on that? Then what are you just gonna scare somebody with it? Chances of a piece of, splintered wood or whatever, it would cause the thing not to cycle right. I mean, it was a disaster. And he really didn't know what I was talking about. And I had to explain that to him. And it's very important to keep your markers in good condition. But it's also important to keep your projectiles and your chemical rounds in good condition. And if you're going to leave a chemical round inside of any type of marker with a spring magazine. Now that could be the burner where it's a spring going up and down or a spring going this way, side to side. You're going to have pressure on these projectiles and it doesn't matter if it's these or these. They're plastic. These were designed to break upon hitting something and being shot out of a, a launcher that is not high power. We modify these to make them high power. If you keep taking these and you bring them from the extreme heat in the summertime in your car and leave them there into your house, up against your body, to the air conditioner, to a cold room, vice versa in the winter, you bring it outside freezing cold, you leave it in your car, you bring it in the house, you put it up next to your body, you have extreme changes in temperature. You've left lawn furniture out or a patio furniture out all year, right? And you didn't cover it. What happens? The plastic becomes brittle and it starts to crack and fade. Well, it's no different than this plastic. And what you're going to wind up doing is weakening the structure of this. And then when you go to shoot it, it's going to wind up 
breaking inside the barrel or cracking under the pressure of the, of the spring in the magazine all the time. So you really shouldn't, and I know it's horrible, but you really shouldn't leave them loaded all the time. That's why me, personally, I want something loaded all the time. And for like a home defense, where I need something to be loaded all the time, first of all, I keep all my stuff in a safe, all my projectiles, because that safe stays the same temperature. Okay, you don't need a firearm just to have a firearm safe. You can have a safe for your less lethals and for your chemical rounds. When you use something like, I'm gonna try these things go all over the place, they drive me nuts. Actually, I'm gonna open them up here, I'll put them in the desk. When you use something like the HDR 68 or the HDR 50, there's no pressure on these to crack them or very little from what's in the cylinder. They're not stacked up on each other. So I'll be honest with you, I've only ever had one in a burner crack in my whole life, uh, but I know other people do suffer from it. I've never had a chemical round crack in any of the HDR revolvers ever. So if you're looking for something, even the HDR 50, it's a drum magazine. You're not going to have or you're gonna lessen your chance of that happening. But still bringing it to the extremes, you have to be careful and you have to examine these. You have to be on top of your launcher and you have to be on top of what's in it. I mean, I think everybody should at least once or twice a month be firing and practicing with practice rounds. I have never, and I know a lot of people knock these, but I've tested these a hundred times for a human or for an animal these little 50 caliber ones, they're miserable. You sneeze and they burn and you can, it, it makes you, you can't stop sneezing and burning from these things. So if you're hitting somebody with 20, 30 joules from this or two of these and then followed up by three of these, you're gonna have the advantage. But you gotta be on top of these things. You gotta, you know, take them out of your marker when you get home and you gotta be careful with them and you gotta put them, I have a little screw jaw, a plastic one, and I put them all in there and then I put it into my safe and I leave it where it stays the same temperature. And then if I gotta take it out and carry it with me, I have it in here against my body, which is pretty much warms up the CO2 too. If you've ever tried that, you know what I'm talking about. And it really works good. Um, but you can't leave these things for weeks on end and hope that they're gonna work for you. They're just like anything else. They need inspection, they need to be cared for, they need to be kept clean. You can't have lint getting in them. They come with little squeegees to clean them. You just, you gotta be on time. I know it's hard, you know, we're all like that in life. You know, life, you have things to do, work, family, things, that. You gotta be on top of this stuff. If you need this to depend on for your life or for the life of your pet or something else, and they are great, they do work for um, great against like coyotes and bear and things like that. And I know a couple of guys, not a few, I know a couple, I know two, that have used uh, the pepper balls against a bear and they work. They really work well and they do deter the animal. And you can, the, the nice thing about it is you could use it while the animal is far away from you. Uh, both guys that I know that did it did not use a 50 cal, they used a, a 68 cal. And now I'm gonna have to check those to make sure they didn't crack. So, they drop everything, it's, it's really horrible. But you know what, it's great, it happened on the thing, because now I can check them. Now, this will be testament, did they crack? These are Duke Defense Falls, and I drop everything, I swear to God, I don't know what it is, don't put it in the rollers too. I'm forever dropping crap. I drop glasses when I put them in the dishwasher. It's horrible, but let's check these out now. Now that I dropped it in the magazine, let's see what happened. So, first one, and we'll put them back in the magazine as we go. First one, no cracks, perfect, perfectly fine. Second one, no cracks. Perfectly fine. Third one. Nothing. 
fourth. Fifth. Okay, so the other thing too is believe it or not, I keep everything oiled up with a little bit of film of oil around it, which does keep it a little bit um a little better condition. So what I have here is uh, it is not punctured. So I have one you could see sitting in my detent down there. This is my detent, nothing comes out. This is a really good detent for me. So what I do is I usually, if I'm going out someplace, what I usually do when I load my HDP 50, I keep two kinetics up front. Because the first one hits hard, but for some reason, you ever notice the second one seems to even hit harder? Not sure why. After two kinetics, I pop two chemicals, or three chemicals, followed by a last kinetic. So I got a sandwich I got. Two kinetics, three chemicals, and one kinetic. And that's my um, carry package for if I go out. Because if I'm in the car and somebody comes up to me at the window and I need to, and I have to pull it out, I can always hit a kinetic or two kinetics to get them back so I don't get pepper myself. And when if they go back or they go down, then I can then from there, if I need a chemical, I can always give them a chemical and get the hell out of there. So that's how I like to keep it when I'm going out, especially in the car, if I'm in a place where I, I know I'm gonna be in confined and I don't wanna gas myself, because you will gas yourself with these things. If you're gonna use chemicals indoor, you're gonna have um, secondary exposure to it. Reason why this one is kept with all, now this is fully modified. Sometimes I put, excuse me, um, kinetics in there. If I'm just having it in my home, yes, I would have kinetics in here. And the reason I keep this one loaded fully with pepper rounds is I have a little dog and I take him out at night. I live in the mountains and I have a lot of bear and coyote and I do see them on my property all the time. So I always have this available where if I take out my little dog at nighttime and I put him out in my backyard to run around for, you know, before bed or whatever, I have this on hand in case there's a bear out there or a coyote, I don't want to bother my dog. So I keep this loaded with chemicals. And the, the great thing about all these T4E, these Umerix lines is fully modified, they can take out, they can shoot the chemical rounds without breaking them. I've tried it numerous times and you never have them break on me in a fully modified one. So, just something to think about as far as chemical rounds and taking care of your marker and maintenance of it. Yes, it may be partially faulty to the design of the chemical round, but it's also partially something we can somewhat control. And remember, they have to be made of plastic to break on impact. So there is a good chance that the environment and the elements being exposed to are going to weaken that plastic. I would change out and cycle my chemicals every six months or so. So if you want to buy kinetics and you want to stock up on a, a thousand kinetics, by all means, I think it's a great idea. And I think it's even more important to stock up on kinetics than it is on real bullets at a certain point because chances are in the nonsense we're having today, which I could probably do a whole other video on this. Um, and I think I will. I think I'll just leave it at this for now. I will talk about why kinetics are more important than another video, in my opinion. So let's just leave it at that for today about maintaining your marker. And um, I'll do the other video very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.